Hello and welcome to another episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3DS Max. And we are in the process of wrapping up the back decoration on our AT-AT Walker vehicle. Let's see here. I'm going to start by doing a little bit of cleanup work on this piece. Let's hit F4. Frame up on it. Because there's some things we need to fix. Uh, first off, let's make some chamfers to get rid of the razor sharpness going on here. So how far did that take me? Yeah, it took me around to there, which is great. And let's see, we can go to here. We should be able to loop that around. And that might work out in our favor. And then again, it might explode. And if it explodes, that's okay too. But if we're going to do it, might as well do it all the way around. Um, let's see, let's grab these guys. And what happens if I loop that? Well, that's pretty nice. And we'll go ahead and loop those too. And that I don't want. So now we've crossed the line of what I think of as useful. And let's just try chamfering this and just see what we get. It's either going to work or it's going to blow up. And I don't think it'll blow up. So to about here. And that actually looks okay. Chamfer never ceases to amaze me. And let's see if we can loop this. And we can do a really nice chamfer here. Put a segment or two in there to kind of help with the rounding. Click OK. You know, hang on a sec. I'm going to back up a little bit. What if we go all the way to here? And what if I include these guys? Now, what happens if I loop those? Now, if you're curious, the reason I'm doing what I'm doing right now is to kind of accentuate the change in direction. It's like even chamfer these guys, too, which we probably need to do that. And let's see, we don't want those. We already decided that, so those can go away. Now, let's try this again see what comes out of it. Get out of here, press F4, and it's a lot easier to see where that change in direction begins, and I really like that, so we'll go with it. Now this brings me back here to this piece, which is kind of all the same thing right now. Now, if I grab an element, that's just one great big element, and I'm really glad to see that. I'm going to re-smooth it, uh, not to 45, let's try 20 degrees. And I should clean that up, and then we're going to scale it uniformly like so. And then I'm going to extend it a little bit. That may be a little bit too big, actually. Oh, so maybe not quite that much. Grab this element. A little bit that way, a little bit that way. Slide it back in. View is fine. Okay, so yeah, we'll just go with that. Alright, now back over here to the back panel. We've got this armor piece up here on the top. And there's a look at one, you know, one kind of, I guess, interpretation of it. And we can do that really quickly with uh, just starting off with a box. So let's make a box. And we'll drag it out about like so, and we'll give it some height. And let's slide it out away from everything. Now, uh, if we take a look, it's got this kind of trapezoidal extrusion coming out the bottom of it, which that's easy enough. We know how to do that kind of thing pretty well. But to make it a little faster, let's take, I think, width segments. Let's press F4 so we can see the segments. We'll add a couple of segments to this. And let's go ahead and convert it at this point. Actually, that's a little thick. Let me pull down the height. And then we'll convert it. Awesome. Now, easy way to do this part would just be to grab this guy, do an extrusion, and it doesn't have to go as far as all that. Click OK, scale, and pull that in. And there we are. Now, let's go ahead and grab 
this guy. Let's get faces. We'll nuke these out. Let's grab edges here and here. Because there is, well, there's not that much rounding there, but we'll put a little bit. There's more at these corners. But we'll get a little bit of chamfer in here. And pull that down. Click OK. Let's get you and this guy and this guy over here. Actually, before I do that, we should probably take these two and scale them away from each other to get that sort of taper effect toward the top. That looks pretty good. Now with that, let's go ahead and just chamfer those by themselves. So we'll add to the chamfer amount, drop in a couple of segments for additional rounding, Click OK. Let's grab these two. And do a little bit of chamfer here as well. Click OK. Hit 3 and grab U and cap and U and cap as autosave catches us. And let's see. Boom. Let's grab these faces. Let's move locally. Slide those up. Now we need this to kind of reach over the top, kind of bend forward. So the way I'm going to do that is let's grab all these edges across here. And I think we can set this to parent, and that should work. And we'll slide this up. And then grab these guys. Now let's see, can I just extrude out? That's pretty close, actually. Just get a little bit of height there. And then click OK. Let's get the Move tool out, and I'll move that down. It's already planar, but we could rotate it a little bit. We can grab these guys and pull them straight down to kind of thin the whole thing out a little. Now, let's do some chamfering. So we'll chamfer here. We need to center the whole thing up by the looks of it, so let's make sure it's in the middle. Bump! And then grab edges, get this guy, and this guy. Do a little bit of chamfer here. And that'll do. And let's see. Uh, let's do chamfer all the way around. What happens when I loop? Well, not everything I hope for, um, but I think we should be able to do this. Uh, make sure we're ignoring back facing in case something terrible happens. And convert that over to edges, deselect some stuff that we don't need, and then chamfer that. Looks good. Now let's get this guy and loop. and chamfer that. Ooh, terrible. Um, let's add this guy. We have some really funny stuff going on here, so let's see if we can fix that. So let's cancel out of here. Let's grab polygons. Give me these guys, let's just delete them. Actually, let's try this instead. Let's see if I can get this edge and this edge. Now, if I loop you, I don't know if you wrap all the way around, but I hope you do. Let's try removing those. Switch over to vertices. Don't seem to see any floating verts. So now let's grab this, then loop. Then we'll do a chamfer and we'll pull it kind of tight. And that's a little bit too long, I think. So let's grab vertices. And now we're still in parent mode, so that's good. And we need to shorten the whole thing up as long as we don't have ignore back facing on. So just pull that up like so. Could grab the two corners and scale them in a little. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so that takes care of that. Excuse me there. Now, uh, let's see here. If we go back over to our pictures... This picture shows a lot of the vent work that's going on back here, so let's start putting some of this in, and then uh, we'll probably just fill in some blocks, um, 
I'm not sure if we'll even worry about the greeblings underneath this plate. And so let's just start up here. Give me, let's see here, let's grab a new box. And I'm going to put it right in here. A little bit of thickness, and let's move it up. Fit it in about like so. Let's center it. And we don't need all these extra divisions. Well, wait a minute, hang on. Yeah, we could use those, actually. So, hey, cool. <clears throat> and, uh, whoa, pardon me a moment. <clears throat> really sorry about that. But I guess that's what happens when you've been talking for a long time. Now, let's see. Now, i got to drink water here. Sorry, I'm dying here. So, let's see. Let's convert this over to an editable poly. Grab all of these. Boom, boom. Like so. Let's scale them in. Like so. Let's scale these guys out. And that takes care of that. Now, scale snapping is not on, is it? No, we're just getting a little bit of pop. But that's okay. Now, I see three separate areas where these grates, these vents kind of exist. And what I'm going to do, let's see, let's grab this edge here. Actually, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Let's grab these guys and let's make a connection. Oh, cancel that. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> cancel. Give me this guy. We need a ring and then connect. There we go. Now, if I take... Yeah, okay. I see what I need to do here. Let's just connect that once. I'm going to take this guy and this guy. I'm going to loop them and try to completely remove them. Now, what happens if I loop and then chamfer this out? Ah, perfect. See, what I want to do is make sure that this stays perfectly vertical. So let's do that to right about here and click OK. Now, I usually don't do this, but let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe an eighth guy up there. So something like that. Let's ring these edges and connect them. That'll probably do it. Let's go with eight or even seven. It'll just make them show up a little better. And ooh, check that out. That's kind of scary. So let's cancel that. Let's make sure we are not doing anything too crazy. Yeah, you know what? Let's just make a new selection. Um, just to be on the safe side. There we go. Okay, now let's grab faces here, 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 all the way down through there, and then all the way up this side. We're going to do an inset by polygon, by nowhere near that much. Say like so, click OK. Let's do an extrusion. Pull that inside. There we go. Now let's go back to faces. Let's try selecting by angle so I can get all these guys at once. And let's try a little bevel here. So out a little, in a little for some rounding, and click OK. All right, so now if we get out of here, press F4. We've got a really serious looking vent shape there, which is a little too over beveled, it looks like. So we can only go to about there, which is okay. I'm fine with that. Now, from what I'm seeing here, we've got kind of like a vertical grate and then some horizontal bars that sit on top of it. I am so going to cheat that. Uh, let's grab this guy. who He's become kind of a favorite. And I'm going to make a copy of him. 
click OK. Let's rotate him 90 degrees, point him straight up and down. Uh, let's grab our little align tool and we're going to slap him slap bang right there. Boom. And he's moving in world, but let's move him locally so we can slide him up. Let's scale him. And just extend that out. Like so. Then let's get chamfer box. No, let's just do a regular box. We'll just make it a chamfer box. And just some amount of thickness. Move in view is good. And we'll center that up. Now, let's do some things here. Let's take its length and pull it down. Uh, let's pull its width up a little bit. Go ahead and convert it to an editable poly. Press F4 so we can see edges. Ah, oh, goodness. Um, so, yeah. Let's get rid of those extra segments. Didn't even notice. Alright, now let's grab edges all through here. Do a quick chamfer. Not that much chamfer. Click OK. And... Boom. Get out of editable poly mode. We'll shift drag this up. Click OK. And there's like a, a really close version. So we'll slide that to right about there. We don't want to do whatever we just tried to do there. Slide this guy up. And slide this guy up. In fact, I'm going to push that a little more. All right, so there's all of that. Now we can make another box that just kind of sits in here. And we'll add a lot of height to this. Go ahead and convert it. Grab edges. Take this guy and slide him out. So we're just adding some additional thickness. I'm going to grab all of these edges plus you it looks like we got that one that'll probably do and chamfer and click OK now let's do some mirroring so let's see get out of here we want you and you and you and you and all of this guy and these things and we can probably find some stuff to stick in there. In fact, let's do that before we start mirroring over like, any greebling work. Uh, do we have anything? Oh, uh, yeah. How about these little devices? They're just going to turn up everywhere. Boop. And give me one of those right there. But this is the extra large model. Let's put that down in there. And let's see here. Could grab, I don't know, let's just do one more of these really cool looking things. Hit three, grab this, go ahead and cap it off. And let's see here, let's grab you. Oop, make sure you add a vegetable poly mode. And take that. Let's see if we can align it right there. And we'll kind of tuck this sort of underneath the armor. So this can be slid down a little bit. So we, we see there's something there, but we're you know it's covered up, it's being partially protected, as well as this guy. In fact, we can really slide that down so it'll only kind of catch from certain angles of the camera. We can scale this guy up a little bit and then flatten him a little. So that'll only show from certain angles as well. And now let's go ahead and mirror all this stuff. And get you. Switch to world, transform coordinate center, mirror, copy. Yes. Good. Let's take this guy, I'm going to shift drag a copy of him up here, and slide him back into this thing. 
And there we go. We pretty much got the back panel conquered. And that green wireframe is tripping me out because it's like the same color as Maya's wireframe. Uh, we need to do a... I thought I did a chamfer around this edge. Maybe I did, and I, then I canceled it. I really don't know, but we need to fix that. So let's loop this, and then let's do a chamfer. Make it kind of a severe chamfer with a segment or two. And there we go. And let's grab all of this stuff, and let's drop on our modeling material. Press F4 and see what we got. So we have the back of our ad out walker. Okay, now we get on to the moment of truth, which is making the underside of this. And I think before we can do that, we're going to need to do a little bit of prep work. So let's see. If I grab this guy, he's got some stuff going on already. Let me jump over to edges. We're going to grab this edge, and oh, yeah, check that out. So I need to hit F4 and really get an idea of what I'm in, what's in store for me. Um, can we really carefully, I mean, this is both sides of this guy, yeah? Can we get those two edges and then also get those two edges and then also get those two edges all in one fell swoop? Yes, I believe we can. And then that's interesting. We'll leave that alone. So, boom. Now, let's see. If we scale and then hold down shift, we can drag in some thickness, which is nice. And if I grab this edge and I ring that, how far around does that go? It doesn't go all the way over to here, probably because it can't. But how far up did it make it? It made it all the way across to there, and then I guess it didn't know where to go from there. So if we ring this now, thanks all the way down to there. Awesome. Now, what do I get if I try to connect that? Oh, well, some sort of madness. Okay, so let's cancel that. Try that again. I think I was onto something there for just a moment. Ring, and that all looks okay. And then get this dude and ring that, and that's everybody. No, there is something really weird going on with that. So, when in doubt, change up your methods. That means there's some sort of weird piece of geometry, but this is such an asymmetrical piece, and there's been all sorts of stuff beveled on it that I don't really want to try to mess with that. So what I'm going to do is grab the mighty slice plane, which is pointing in exactly the wrong direction. And we'll rotate this guy 90 degrees and slide it back. And I guess we'll rotate it forward a little bit, too. Turn off rotation snapping, get something fairly parallel to the back of the whole contraption. Say to right about there. Awesome. Slice. Go. Awesome. No, it didn't want to slice. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Well, that'll do it every time. Ooh, now I do want to undo that. We want to go to right about here. And then slice, and then turn off the plane. So now, um, because we didn't save this little extrusion, which is okay, and wasn't ready for that extrusion. Ah, don't do that. Okay, now let's shift drag a copy of those inside, like so. Let's do some target welding of some vertices. And now it should all become clear what I just did. Bump fly over here, bump, and then switch over to edges and get U and U and run a bridge, and then U, nope, U and U and run another bridge, now if we get all of these, See what happens if we try to planarize them in 
Z. No, it says. Oh, yeah, make sure no constraints are on. Um, y, that's what I wanted. So there we go. Nice and neat. That's almost where we need to be, but we also need this edge to come in as well. Now, that edge, it does actually reach all the way across, which is pretty remarkable. So we can pull all this in, grab our target weld on vertices, weld this guy right here, can weld this guy right here, and now we're actually starting to simulate some thickness, which is pretty amazing. Now, let me grab this guy, actually these couple of guys, I'm going to frame up on them so I can kind of see what's going on here. Now, this is a separate piece of geometry. That's okay, um, but I think what I'm going to do here, let's see, I don't necessarily want to just attach that outright, though certainly that should theoretically be possible. We need to make some uh, vertices here to connect in, and then all that could be one box. That could just be brought over and welded. Is there anything going on across the back of this that would prevent any of that? I mean, I don't see anything. So how many would we really need? Uh, we don't... Okay, we can do some cleanup right here. Straight off the bat. Uh, let's see if we grab... This object, let me grab faces, that can go, these can go, that can go, grab edges, give that a second to save, and let's bridge. And grab you, and let's bridge. So that's cleaner. Now what do we have going on on the other side? Is it similar? Yeah, we're going to need the same treatment. So let's grab faces. Give me this little guy right here. Nuke, nuke, nuke. Go back to edges. And let's bridge. And bridge. And there we go. Okay, cool. Now, let's do some stuff. If we... Hmm... Let's grab... Oh, we need to... We need edges that cut along in here. We could probably... It makes for some really nasty geometry, but if we didn't want that edge drawn all the way down, we could anchor it across the top. Let's just see about that real quick. What if... That's all pretty clean. So what if we grab a slice plane? Another slice plane. Don't do that. Let's go ahead and jump down to vertices. So we should be able to use the slice plane. And if we slide this forward and rotate it, make it parallel so it runs to right about there, let's go ahead and slice, get out of that. Now, we really only need a couple of cuts at this point. So let's get the cut tool, cut, and cut, cut, cut. All right. Now, if we come over here, and let's see, we should be able to attach this piece. And now it should just be a matter of some target welding. So let's target weld you to there, you to there. Now we're going to have to move some of the, some vertices away from one another. You to there. OK. 
Okay. That was pretty easy. Let's pull this guy over here. Now, let's get out of target weld. Let me just frame up on these verts. That's way too many verts. Just this guy. Okay, back to target welding. Okay, we have to move those away from one another. Target well these two together. It's always when I'm doing this really tiny work, I just involuntarily get very quiet. Not sure why. I guess because I'm holding my breath. I probably am when I'm doing little tiny work like that. Ooh, let's put this guy right. Uh, target weld. Put you right up there. Okay, so yeah, awesome. Now, what's next? Well, we can grab some edges around here. Let's get you. Now, if I loop that, what do we get? Well, that's not what I want, but how far does that loop run? Okay, not what I'm going for, but it's a start. So let's see if we get this this, this, and this. And that's interesting. We'll probably end up having to clean that up a little bit. Uh, but for now, let's see if we can just kind of skip it. Nope. I don't want to skip that. I want to fix that. So let's switch over and we'll pull this. Oh, not you very carefully. Let's pull this guy up. Then we need to grab faces. So, can we get this guy and we'll delete him. Get these two and delete those. Switch back over to edges. And let's grab this edge and this edge and we'll bridge those together. Grab these two edges and we'll bridge those as well. So that's cleaner. Yeah, that's, and it looks fine. Let's move everything back down to transparency. Now this already has some thickness, so I'm not going to stress that. Let's see if we need to clean up the other side. I'm sure we do, because that was just symmetrized. Did we skip one? Yeah, we probably did. So, let's see. We cleaned that up, but we did not clean that one up. Okay, I just must have waltzed right over it. Good. Make sure all that looks okay. Now, let's come over here, switch back over to polygons. I'm going to frame up on this guy and make it a little easier to see. We're going to delete that, delete that, delete that over to edges and I want this edge and this edge and we'll bridge those together and this edge and this edge and we'll bridge those. Now we need to do the same thing on the other side. Now let's just slide this up a little bit. Get it up and out of the way. So go back to polygons, let's grab this guy and frame up on it, delete, 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 edges, and bridge, edges, and bridge, let's grab this edge here and we'll slide that up a little, we can also slide this up while we're at it, may not be a bad idea to do on the other side as well, so we don't end up with 
too much planarity, but I think it'll be all right either way. And you, and you, and you. go and let's bridge these and bridge these all right so yeah that takes care of all of that now this is where it starts to get kind of fun again sort of and we need to come back over here. Let's just start with this edge and I'll frame up on it. And we need to steadily work our way across and get all these edges on both sides of this thing. Is that a floating vertex? Why, I believe it is. And fly over here. get this edge and all the way around and I think we've made it clear to the other side of this which is excellent not that guy but this guy and there okay so now let's rotate around to the other side and we'll do the same thing over here Auto save, boom, boom, boom. And there's going to be that floating vertex on this side too, so make sure we get rid of that. Okay, and make it around to here. Take a deep breath, get your scale tool out, hold down shift and scale these toward each other to right about here, should be good enough. And now we should be able to shade the view back up. We can go back to vertices and target weld here to there. And target weld here to here. Now, these guys don't necessarily line up, but that's okay. We can target weld this guy right there. We can go to the other side and do the same thing. And then the cool thing about everything we just accomplished is that we have a sense of thickness that we can now work with as we start to build up the underside. So now, just as a for instance, uh, we could grab... Uh, let's see, this edge, and let's see if we can loop that, how far to loop. Pretty far, actually, which is good. That's what I like. And then, uh, let's see, did it go all the way back around through here? Yes, but we don't need it to grab that. And let's grab this, and, well, let's grab this and loop over here. It goes all the way down the other side. We get some stuff we don't need. So let's make sure all that gets deselected. And once we have this, and once we're satisfied with it, and I think the selection is going to work out pretty well. We can shift drag this up. And we've just created some thickness that we can plug a, uh, a base wall into.
like for the floor shape. So before we wrap up this video, and I know the video is carried over a little bit, let's go ahead and see if we can create a base polygon, a single flat polygon that can fit up inside this and give us kind of the, the basis for the underside of the AT-AT walker. So let's see here. If we, let's jump out of here. I want to grab this guy, hit two. No. All right, editable poly, grab you. This needs to be collapsed. So convert to editable poly, grab edges. Let's loop this. And whatever you're trying to do, stop it. All right, so we got to get, oh, yeah, I see. We've got some stuff here we don't really want, which must be something caused by the loop I'm taking it. Yep. Well. That's a shame, but nothing we can't work with. Cool. So now let's shift drag this back and then up a ways. So now I have some thickness there as well. Okay, now the cool thing about the thickness we just created, we can use this as a modeling base. Let's create a box. And we're going to start off with a box right here, and it's just going to have a little bit of thickness, like so. We're going to make sure this box is centered in X. That's going to be critical for what I have in mind. We'll convert it over to an editable poly. And let's even go ahead and put our modeling material on it. Though it almost looked like it had it already, didn't it? And let's grab these two uh, faces, excuse me. And we're going to scale this out. We don't want to slam into the walls and all the way through them, but a little bit of overlap is okay, as long as it's not coming out the outside. Now, let's see here. Let's grab this shape and we're going to slide it back. And then we're going to need to scale it out again. Make sure we're not protruding, and it looks like we might be. This is going to be a very delicate matter here. Now, you know what? Easier way to do this, what I got in mind here, is just to go ahead and symmetrize, then we can move, because that scaling, we just don't have a great deal of precision. Now, underneath symmetry, let's grab an edge. Now, did our symmetry actually take? Am I just not seeing an edge there? Because usually you get one. Oh, turn on end result, man. Ugh, it's getting late. All right, now it looks like we need to be moving over here. So let's grab this edge and move. And I want to confirm that I'm seeing motion on both sides. No, sir. Do you need to move this side? I get them confused. There we go. So we can stick that through. Now what kind of protrusion do we have here? Nothing major. Okay, switch back to faces. Let's extrude out a little bit. Click OK. I don't care how far, really. And we're just going to slide this back. You can do it from down here just as easily. right about here. And then we can extrude again. And once again, we don't really care how far, because we're going to end up moving it all anyway. Push this all the way to the back wall. We just don't necessarily want it to stick through. And we can grab this edge and just slide it in until it disappears. 
And like so, we end up with a wall underneath our walker. Now, we're not finished. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this. I'm going to grab... Oh, let's not nudge anything. Let's grab these faces, and we're going to delete them. And in doing that, we now have the ability to go get more faces. Uh, make sure we have the right object first. That'll help. So we get this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Now the cool thing is we can do an inset by some amount, doesn't really matter how much. Click OK, and then we can bevel that with a negative amount of bevel. See if it ever sticks through the floor of this thing. It doesn't look like it's gonna, but we can keep going up. And then take the outline amount and pull that in negatively so we know it never sticks through. So go to maybe right about here. Now see, all we've done is we've created a great big filler shape that'll keep us from seeing through the ad at. But we've also hollowed it out so that we can create the kind of cylindrical shape on the underside. We've got plenty of modeling space on which we can add greebles. In fact, we have a great big flat surface that we can use as an auto grid to drop pieces down onto. If you were really wanting to kind of, uh, I won't say cheat because I mean it's it's certainly valid. If you're really trying to get done quickly, you could probably call the ad at finished right here under the assumption that nobody's really going to be walking up underneath it. You could probably argue that Luke really just got lucky uh, because, well, if you think about it, he didn't get all that lucky. The only way he got to the underside of this was to wreck his speeder. He got blown to pieces, and he's lucky he got out. And you can think, you know, the drivers are like, well, okay, we just blew him down. Let's make sure we adjust our step to make sure we squash his wreckage. I'd have thought he was dead, too. But enough of that. Uh, let's go ahead and call the video here. And then on the next video, we'll start working on the underside. And actually, it's entirely possible the next video could end up being the last. But either way, uh, that wraps things up for this video, for this particular episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3ds Max. I wanted to send a huge, huge thank you to all of our member sponsors for making videos like this popular. Oh, not popular, well, maybe popular, but making them possible so that the community can watch them. Thank you all so much, and I will catch you all on the next episode of Modeling on the Fly. Please take it easy.